tutorial questions. Um, but we're going to jump through to tutorial sheet number 11, which you should already have access to. It's on the Moodle, right? So if you go on Moodle, you should be able to find uh, this thing here. And what I want us to do is to attempt to work towards uh, the last two questions. So scroll down to question number, uh, number five. We shall start with, um, we shall start with, we shall attempt five, one, five, five, three, and then jump on to five, oh, sorry. So we shall, we shall do 5.1, five, 5.3, five and, and 6.3. It shouldn't take us long to do these things, right? So the idea is I'll be around to walk to, to see if uh, people have any problems with this. If, we, if, if, if people will be experiencing any challenges with this thing here, yeah? Yes? We've done this before. We have, we have had such sessions before where you work through the problems and then my role is just to facilitate to kind of like help you work through the problems. I'm a bit apprehensive about jumping through to the data path um, lecture series just because I, I feel like people are not, are not yet up to speed with this. So is this fine? We shall start with uh, 5.1, right, which is here. Simple program. And then we shall go to 5.3 and then we shall attempt to do 6.3. 6.3. Oh, and then in terms of uh, announcements, we're supposed to have the makeup class on Sunday, but apparently the people that are doing maths or whatever it is they're doing, apparently they have a test. I don't know if this is true. So we shall have our makeup class on, um, on um, I'm sorry? What's, what's been moved? Fine, then we have class on Sunday, 14 hours. We shall have our class in here. And hopefully, I think Sunday we should be able to start the data path class, I think, I don't know. Um, thank you for letting us know, Ms. Ms. Mlenga, right? We are very grateful for that. Okay. Do you understand why we're doing this? Because on the 11th of October, we have a test and the content in the test is going to primarily be based on this content. And people are still struggling with this. This is why we're having this session. Yes, the other reason is because it's in the syllabus, right? So go figure. Sorry? Yeah, you want to be on a, a, a slot that uh, that works, right? Yeah, Is that working, Miss no. Miss Chola? Yeah. <laughs> no, that one. Oh, no. You can ba buckle up with Miss Chola, I guess. That's the case. Is, are you are you okay with that, Miss Chola? You can do it together with him. Right? Yes, madam. Um, on YouTube, yes. YouTube. <laughs> they're there, they're in video form, right? You can <laughs> That's like cheating. It's like, uh, where are the answers at the end of the book, right? No, like, I, I can post them if you want to. I, I haven't been posting them, but I, do you want me to post them? Yes, sir, we can follow them. Well, then why don't, you, why, why don't you ask so that I post them? I thought people didn't want them, which is why I don't post them. 
Fine. Can you go through proper channels and formally ask, like you did last time? We haven't updated the solutions, but like you did, you shall ask us to say, can you please? Uh, I'm looking for credentials for this to see if I can log in. Can you do that? Can you send an email to say, please post the .asm files or whatever it is there? Are you enjoying this, ladies uh, and gentlemen? Sorry? What are you trying? You haven't done anything yet. You better try. It's going to, you're going to do, uh, you're going to have to do Jesus. better than trying um, uh, on October 11th at seven hours, GMT plus two, right? But, uh, so you better learn this stuff here. I'm not scaring you, I'm just telling you, what do you mean? Friday, Sorry? The fees, this Friday. Yes. From what to what? It's all the way up to loops. From what? Everything you've done up to loops. No, why not? Okay, so what do you mean everything? Everything we've done up to loops. That's what the quiz is. Everything from yes, one, everything from two. lecture number one, which was February 18th. Uh, yes. You're, you're not taking this very seriously, are you? Okay, I don't understand why class rep number two and or number one and Andrew are taking snapshots here. The stuff is on mood, all right? <laughs> why are you doing that? Get some, do that. Is this working? Mm -hmm. You're not doing anything, are you? Ah. Hmm? You've been missing in action. Where have you been? Okay. Which class is a crush? Uh, I Okay. On which days? Uh, Monday. Monday I've rest. Sorry? Rest. Okay. Then Friday, that's Okay. Hmm? Hi, how are you? It's a blessing. Writing HTML code here. Could you please? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you found. She found that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I don't know if the, the, the jolt of adrenaline is going to be helpful to you. Imagine it's seven. 705 and there's a question that is like 5.1. What are you going to do? You're not just going to sit and stare at some blank space. Well, um, no, I'm just saying, I'm not talking to you, I'm just standing here and like, oh, fine. You're not just going to sit and, no, seriously, right? You're not going to sit there and stare at the thing, right? Because you know that marks are at stake. So the question is, how are you going to attempt to address question number 5.1? Yes, exactly. So, okay. <laughs> now, a, a reminder, right? As you are, uh, so if, if this was, so if, if if this was, if this were, if this was, if this were, uh, if this were, I don't know if this, this was or something. I don't know. If it was, if it was a test, right? The English miners. I don't know if this land miners, land twelve hundred. If, if this were, if this was, I don't know. I, I say that I advise you guys that what you want to start with is like come up with a heuristic, right? So you quickly write it down because you know this is like a trivial question. Usually uh, programming, like, like a question like this is, I mean, this is like elementary maths, right? Someone is just asking you how do you, given numbers from 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to, I, I guess it's, let's say number 100 for instance, how do you go about 
getting the squares of those numbers. So you write down your heuristic, you ask yourself, I mean, how do I compute the squares of numbers? What do you do? What is it, how do you compute the square of five? five to the power. Sorry? Five raised to the power. Okay, that's one way of doing it, five raised to the power two. But, but, but then, so you write down just five raised to the power two. Uh, obvious question you must ask yourself is like when you're dealing with uh, the, the MIPS bare instructions, is there an instruction that will allow you to compute five raised to the power something, or a number raised to the power something? What's another way of computing a number raised to the power two? Multiplied. Yes, so it's a number multiplied by itself, right? Then you'd have come up with your own heuristic, and you realize that when you dumb down the, the solution that way, you can easily come up with the instructions that you need. You know, the, the, the thing that you need to do here is just figure out how to multiply a number by itself. If the number is sitting in register 9, it says mot, M-U-L, or M-U-L-T, whatever you want, take your pick, right? The register, comma, the register. Uh, if you're using mot, right, it's three registers, obviously. The answer is going to be the destination. But if you're using M-U-L, more, it's just going to be two registers. Where is the answer going to be? Where? Yes, Ms. Ms. Chipala, where is the answer going to be when you use M-U-L? Where? So if, if, what I'm saying is, if you, if, you, if you narrow down to the fact that for you to implement question number 5.1, what you have to do is multiply a number by itself. If a number is sitting in register nine, I'm saying that there are two ways in which you can evaluate that thing. It's either you use MUL or MULT. But you have to be careful. If you use MUL, you know that it just takes in how many operands? Two. The second one, this thing here takes in three operands. So if you use the one that takes in two operands, you need to figure out exactly where the solution is going to find itself. Where is it in the high register or low register? I don't know. Sorry? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so this is the thing, right? This is the thing. So if I were you, by the way, I'll just go with uh, mot. Because the, you know that your answer is just going to be in the destination register. Can you implement this now, please, quickly? Oh, yes. yes. Is it a, uh, do you want to share the question with the rest of the class? No. Okay. So for, for us oh, it's working now. <laughs> no, okay. the notepad works, but what does it work is just the kitty spin. I can print on the notepad, but it just can't run on the kitty can you, spin. Can you run it? Let's see if it's going to work. If something can run on yeah. the kitty spin. Open kitty spin. Mm -hmm. Might as well fix this today, right, if we can fix it. <laughs> It's already saved. Has anyone managed to address 5.1? Now, now this is why you keep saying, oh, there's not enough time. I mean, it's like, we, how, how many minutes do you need for you to work towards 5.1, honestly speaking? Nobody has finished 5.1. Oh, yes. What are you doing? I, I can't look at this one on the desktop, the one that I want to load. Ah, oh, Bible verse is right. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the desktop, let's see. Okay. Did you give it a, an extension? Did you save it with an extension? What you want to do with your computer is configure it, go to view. It's usually a good idea to do this. And then go to show file extensions. Click that, check that. It's like muscle, no, no, go back to view. Still remember these things, right? Okay, it's checked, that's fine. Um, so you didn't give it, so what you want to do is rename this, just tap into it so that you rename it. 
then give it a dot .asm. Did you give it a dot .asm? You didn't, right? No, it's, it's just on the notebook. Okay, just do servers, file servers, and then give it a dot .asm. File and then server. Dot .asm. Okay. And then go to Qt Spin now. There it is. Run that with uh, Simulator. Just say okay there, or board or whatever. Um, no, simulator, not print. Which one is the same simulator? The menu item simulator. Settings. Do you not do this? We, we check MIPS. The settings. I take that the settings. Oh, no, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, what is that? Sorry? Where did you find the hashtag? I don't know. <laughs> I've, been, I've been looking for the hashtag for the, for the longest now. Really? Yes, because my hashtag, because it's like everything on the keyboard is misplaced. Yeah, the configuration of this machine. Yes, because that's, that's what comes on the hashtag. For this, I have to actually come on the ads. Okay. So I, I'm wondering the truth. I don't know, I might have, I just accidentally uh, oh. did it. I, I, I don't remember <laughs> what I did. Um, You want to load this and uh, load that file, reload it, load and initialize. Yeah, open. Execute that, let's see. Are you sure it's not the right thing here? Yeah, you might want to. Yeah. Do you want to go to, are you connected to the internet right now? Yeah, oh. No. Okay. Uh, well, you can, you might want to try out Mars as, as you are doing that, there's Mars, but it's fine, you know, you can try and restore it first or something. Has anyone managed to finish this? Okay, so it's fine. Can we transition to 6.3 then? No, I mean the ones that have finished. No, it's not fine, so we are stuck. <laughs> No. Okay, I'm coming. Let me see. We start with uh, group A, right? Group, group A has finished here. Oh, group one, sorry. <laughs> Did they ever ask you if you, you're in group one at home, right? Mom and dad, are you, are you in group eight? I don't know if it's... <laughs> no, we are all group one here, sorry. Let's see. Okay. Okay, this is good stuff. It's pretty trivia here. 
What's the problem here? With, with where are you stuck? Let's start with what the question, the question is right here. You see, the question is telling us to say, um, we write a program that is going to do two things. It will prompt a user for a number, right? So it, it, it prompts you for a number. I might have to type in maybe four or five. I'll type in six. It's prompting me for a number. A number has to be an integer, right? A natural number. I could choose to type in zero or 25. It doesn't matter. But once I type in that number, I should then print out the square of all the natural numbers. Now, imagine a situation where the user types in 10. The natural numbers between, the natural numbers between 0 and 10 are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10, right? Mm -hmm. So what we need to print out once the user types in 10 is the square of 0, the square of 1, the square of 2, the square of 3. So effectively, we're going to print out 0, 1, 4, 9, right? 16, 25, all the way up to the square of the last number that the user has typed in. So how do we implement this? The thing has different components to it. The first part is we must prompt a user to enter a number. How do we prompt a user to enter a number? They've told us here. The prompt should be enter natural number. That would be the prompt. So if, if we're saying the prompt is enter natural number, you notice that uh, for us to type enter natural number, we need to use system call code number four to print this piece of text that says enter natural number. Once we do that, we now actually request for a system call code or operating system service that's going to extract the value from the user. System call code number five to read an integer, the natural number. Once we read that number, we are going to loop through that, loop from zero up to that number. And as we are looping, we shall be multiplying the number that we're iterating through by itself, printing this zero. <laughs> Sorry? Exactly, that is the, in fact, that is the question. Why are we here? Why are we alive? It's like, that's a question, right? Have you watched, uh, I don't know what that movie is, I've forgotten. You know what I mean? The question here, by the way, guys, the, the thing here, right? If you, if you've, the, the question here is about loops, right? We're trying to see if you understand loops. The parts to do with prompting are trivial. The first part, system call code number four. Second part, system call code number five. And then you start looping. You start looping from zero up to the number that the user has entered. As you're looping, you better think about those things you spoke about. The condition that you're going to need for you to break out of the loop. The initial values that you're going to have to include. Right? How do you break out of that loop? How do you square the numbers? How do we... Well, we can do it together, but no, nobody... Well, we can do everything together if, if you want. I we can do everything together, actually, if you want to. But on the 11th of October and on the 20th of November, they'll be like, let's do it together. Which is why we have to sit and learn how to do these things on okay. our own. I just give you the heuristic. Are there still, uh, maybe we can just, uh, we've spent a lot of time here, jump the hoop slightly, work through this together, very simple problem. And for those of you that have been going through the past exam questions or past assessment questions, I think this was like in the exam or something, was it? Was it exam last year or something or test? I don't know, can't remember. But, so I told you, the thing you have to do when you're solving these problems is you start with, you start with the simplest parts, right? Sorry? No, people are getting lazy. I'm not going to put anything on YouTube. We've stopped. <laughs> We've stopped uploading on YouTube. So, the <laughs> well, we, we want to work through the examples ourselves. That's why. No, but when you're stuck, you, when you're stuck, when you're working on a problem and you're stuck, you tell someone, I did this, this is where I'm stuck. Nobody's doing that, right? I have done this, this is where I'm stuck. Okay, so, so here's the thing, right? So we are, we, we're saying this thing has different parts to it. The first part is uh, we prompt. Prompt for input from the user, right? 
the, the second part is we read integer, right? Integer from user, right? Um, the third part is we loop, loop through from zero to input from user, right? And I will just save this as a example square. So these are the three things we need to do. How do we read input from a user? Well, I mean, we just have to start with the, the stuff that we normally do here, right? Uh, easy stuff here. Um, so prompt uh, read integer. So how do we, how do we prompt? We just say in v0 we put system call code number four, right? And I'm, I'm doing something unorthodox here. I'll just say input uh, number or something. Then obviously in the data section, I need to have the var input number and then um, ask easy. And then I'll just say enter natural number, right? <laughs> now this came up yesterday when Claire was like, but why do we put the full colon there? Well, we can do this, right? Are you happy now? Okay, so, so we prompt this, and I told you, when you're working through these problems, do it piecewise and then test it out to see if it works. Always a good idea. So what I'll do is I will say, um, just load, fire up QT spin here and then just load this thing here. See if it works. It works just fine, right? Just print it out, enter natural number, though natural is not uh, correctly spelled, doesn't matter. Um, and then uh, the next thing I'll do is read the integer. How do we read the integer? System call code number five. Do not memorize this, right? These things will be given to you, uh, but you can memorize them if you want to. Um, so we've, we've done the part that, part number one is done. Right, would have prompted the user for, for input here. We print the string that will help um, inform the user what we're asking for, and then we read the integer from the user. Then number two now, uh, well, that's number two. Number three is we start looping through. Yes? So on the first one, we don't have to move anything, but from the integer. Thank you very much. We should, so it's for good measure we must move. So you know why you'd get away with not moving at this point? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, well, I guess once you get into the loop, you might pollute the values. You might pollute the values, so yes, excellent. Thank you for that, for that uh, contribution. Uh, so we must move the value from V0, values. A for arguments, V for values, right? Return values. Okay, uh, so they told us that we, we must move this. That's what she said. So we will move this from V0, right? And then we will start looping. Start looping, right? Uh, looping is not really that hard. We first of all need to identify the, we go through our five step process. It's like when you're an alcoholic, apparently you go through the step processes, right? But you go through this five step process where we identify the initial values what else do we do? We do the processing, what else do we do? Yes, exactly, thank you. So, <laughs> loop label is just going to be loop squares, we'll call it loop squares just because, I mean, doesn't matter what name you give it, it's more descriptive that way. We say that when you're dealing with loops, it's always a good idea to start with the condition that you're going to be working with. So in line number 25, we need to specify the condition that will help us break out of that loop. We need the condition to get out of that loop, break out. Otherwise, we will never get out of that loop. You over and over again, you die, you are born, you die, you are born, right? Like they say in the Hinduism. So we want to break out of this loop. How do we break out of that loop? What condition do we need here? That's a question. Um, 
people, people don't remember the steps we went through. The first initial value is, we're saying we're capturing the value of eight, of the value that the user has entered into eight. This would be like a, the thing we use to break out of the loop. The thing we use to loop two as we're computing the squares. The other condition we need is the initial value that we're going to have to start with. We know that natural numbers start from zero. So what we will do is we just say in register nine, we'll, we'll load zero. Okay. So we go into the loop. For us to break out of that loop, we, we will move out of that loop when the value we are processing is greater than the item we've looped into. So it's this BGT here. BGT, whatever is going to be in nine, if what is in nine is greater than what is in eight, we shall break out label. Giving it a more intuitive name here. You will notice here we're saying, because we are going to loop from zero up to the number the user enters. Effectively, we're saying we will loop for, the first time we start looping, it will be looping from the value that will be in nine, which is zero, up to the value the user enters, which is in eight. We shall first of all, once we get into our loop, we check if the value we, st we, we, are, proce the value we are processing is greater than the, the value the, end, the user has entered, right? So in this case, the first time we get into the loop, in iteration number one, it would be zero comma the value that the user has entered. So if the value was four, it would be zero comma four. Is zero greater than four? Of course not, right? So we're checking the condition. The next thing we need to do after we check the condition is we do our processing. And the processing is really closely tied to the problem at hand. The, the problem says you compute the squares of the numbers, right, in the range. So the processing we need to do is nothing more than just a, a multiplication of the number we're processing by itself. What number are we processing? It's in nine, right? So we shall say mod, we'll put the result in, in register 10, and then we'll multiply the number we're processing, notice in line number 28, we're saying the number we're processing is going to be nine. So multiply nine by itself and then put the result into 10. Right. Um, and then once we do that, once we put it into 10, because all we're interested in is printing the values as we're looping, why not print the values within the loop itself? So we multiply the number, get the, get the result, put the result into 10 and then print it out, right? How do we print that? Nothing more than just saying uh, uh, V0 comma one. And then what do we do next? Move into what is in 10 and then Cisco. Right, so, so between, between lines number, so we've multiplied the number by itself and put the result into 10. Between 29 and 31, we're saying just print that number. The number is in 10. For us to print the number, we must move it to A0, why? Because the rules say so. When you, yes, hi. I don't know, let's look at the manual, which is, uh, does anyone have the manual handy? He's saying, is it the mod or the, the more? I've forgotten. It's, it's, it's a mod? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then if, if it's a mod, then we'll have to fix this. Someone just corrected us. Uh, pause for a little while. Force forward this on YouTube. Uh, the green card as well here. Let me just check the... Oh. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, what, what, what Kevin was saying is uh, reminding us that, you notice if we use malt, uh, I don't know if people can see malt here. If we use malt, right, um, 
we, 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 we are not supposed to dump the result in the destination regions. We would have to work with a move from high or move from low or something, right? So it's MUA or MAL. Thank you very much, sir. All right, so MAL, right? Uh, we change this, doesn't change anything. And then we start printing them out, right? So between lines number 29 up to 31, we're just printing the integer, which is the value that, that is in 10, because it's moved to A0, right? Once we are done processing, at this point we have done, we are done with our processing on the first item, or the item that we are processing in that particular iteration of the loop. What do we do? We must modify the initial value, some of the initial values. In this case, the initial value we must modify is the value that is in nine. Why? Because we want to move to the next natural number in the list, zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to n, specified by the user. How do we move to the next natural number? We add one to the current natural number. The current natural number is in nine, so what we do is we'll say, to what is in nine, add one. Would have modified the initial value in nine here. We're just adding one to what is in nine. Add one to what is in nine and then put the result into nine, right? Is this making sense? Like, and I know it sounds like it's confusing. What, what are we doing here? Are, what is in nine, get what is in nine, like it's stepwise, right? get what is in nine, add one to it, and then overwrite what was in nine with the answer here. That's what we're saying. Because that's how registers work, right? They're just temporal storage locations. We overwrite values in there, right? With whatever new values you want to use. Uh, also, I was going to mention this in the next lecture series, but everything we've been discussing, everything we're going to discuss in the next lecture series is happening on that small little thing, the CPU. Right? Imagine that. That small little thing. I don't know if Nonde covered the lab where he opened up the machine. Right? Did he show you the... Oh, I thought there's a machine that was brought. I think it did. Okay. Follow it up. CPU, right? Small little thing. Everything we are doing here, these instructions and whatnot, they're happening on the CPU, right? Right. Okay. So once we modify the, the initial value, what do we do? We repeat. How do we repeat? So this is an unconditional branch here, right? Branch to loop squares. Sorry? But what else would we use? We, we are using B here because it's, it's an unconditional branch. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a branch statement that allows you to to branch somewhere without any condition. Remember the difference between a conditional branch and an unconditional branch? A conditional branch requires that the, the, thing you're working, the things you're working with eventually evaluate to what's called, a, it, it has to be a Boolean expression. It must evaluate to yes or no. BGT, one, two. BOT, one, two. BOT, one, two, we evaluate to true or false. Only when that expression evaluates to true will you branch to the label you specified. But with an unconditional branch, unconditional because there's no condition, you just branch to what you specify. Like in this case, we're just saying line number 35, just another way of saying branch is go to this label. Fine, not branch, go to this label, right? Line number 35, go to loop squares. Where's loop squares? It's right here. I come back here and I notice, oh, I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I come back here, go to loop squares, I go to loop squares, right, I check. And I will only get out of loop squares when the value I'm processing at that point in time is greater than the number specified, right? So once we do that, we are saying uh, that's it. We break out of the loop and then we need to, you notice at this point in time that we did not have breakout label, so we need to define breakout label, right? And, Breakout label really can just be, um, I guess, a definition of exiting here. Is this fine? Let's try and see if this works. Hope it works. So, uh, enter a number, I'll just enter 10, right? So it gives us the answer, but obviously it's, it's it, Gives us the answer we want quite right, but obviously it's not like uh, in a very readable, it's not printed out in a readable manner now, is it? 
We could, we could uh, print a carriage return immediately afterwards if we wish. Right? Zero, one, four, nine, 16, 25, but uh, like squished together because we didn't specify, we're not printing them one, at a one, at one line at a time. So all we can do is we can just say uh, new line character here, new line. The new line character, carriage return, right? The so-called enter, the thing that's written end on your keyboard. This is what we're simulating here as this, this. When you press enter on your keyboard, the CPU sees that as a new line, it's a carriage return, a new line character. We'll go to the next line, right? So which is why, like in this case, we're saying we we'll define a new line character or carriage return, backslash n, lowercase lower, uh, lower n. And then after we print, after we print the integer here, we shall, print the new line character. Because it's a string, we shall need to use system call code number four. We just need to load the address into A0 of new line. New line, not list. Not that it matters anyway, we can name it new list, but it's not very intuitive now, is it? Uh, then we run this and then, oh, let's go up to 100, right? Oh, yeah, yeah? So if we say if the user enters 100, then it will print the squares of the numbers between 0 and 100, including 100, which is why the last one is like, uh, uh, what is 100 times 100? I don't know. Right? <coughs> yes, sir. This is a good question, right? It depends on the question. If you think about it, without the new line character, you're printing 1. Four, right? Zero, one, four, nine, like all squished together. But what you want to do is you want to print the number. You want to print each number on a new line. So immediately not say, for me to print each number on a new line, what I must do first is after I print the number, I must print the new line character. It's like telling the computer, say, once you print this, press enter, right? Boom, and then print the new, new number. No, it's within the loop body. It's part of the processing. Yes. Yes. What she's saying here is, uh, is it possible for us to, like when you're dealing with strings, is it, and I've seen some of you people do that, right? We saw it in the, the submissions that we have full of, uh, uh, plagiarized code here. Yes. Yeah, so many people didn't know what they were doing, right? <laughs> yeah, it was plagiarized, right? Nullified. So you can do that as part of the string. If, if, you, if, if you look at what we have here in line number nine, if you're dealing with strings, let's say you want to print a string, uh, uh, let's say you wanted to, to Imagine this, right? You want to print, it has nothing to do with the question, but you want to print, I am tired, I am hungry, right? Hungry or something. These two, two, these two pieces of text in line number 10 and 11. For you to print them the way they are, like one line at a time, you have two options. You can either print the first text here, I am tired, and then print the new line character, backslash n and then you print the I am hungry, right? Or what you can do is print I am tired combined with a new line character, and then you print I am hungry. So you can combine them. But you can combine them depending on what the question is. Like in this case, combining them would be really hard, right? Well, it's not actually possible. Does that answer your question? Is there a, a, another question? Can we do a... Sorry? For us to print that new line, um, the brand new line, uh, do we have to, on the instructions in the main, do we have to print anything? Or that's how it has been printed on the data it's automatically going to print a new line? I don't think I get your question. You mean? Or the way it has just been printed, it's going to automatically print on a new line. 
No, so if you notice line number 11 here, right? we, are, we, are, we are telling Qt spin say we want to define this character, this is in RAM, right? But because it's in RAM, we have to, the, the only, for us to be able to make use of new line, we must use it somewhere in the code, which is why var line is appearing where? Line number 36 up to 38. So we are using it here. I mean, otherwise it's pointless to declare it in, in memory, right? It's, I mean, you could, but you're just eating up space. Why? Right? How many bytes does the new line, this thing, how many bytes are these? Backslash n. Well, I was going to come in the exam, maybe. No. How many bytes? Whoa, where is where am I? How many bytes are in line number 11? How many bytes are these? How many bytes are backslash n? <laughs> Sorry? 64 bytes. Wow. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. 64 bytes, how many? <laughs> okay. Uh, hello. How many bytes is hello? Sounds funny here, but this is a serious question. Okay, so if hello is five bytes, how can the new line character be 64 bytes? Bits. Bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes. Sorry? I don't know. It depends on the architecture. In terms of MIPS, yes. A character is equal to one byte. Sorry? Yes. The 64 you are talking about, you're thinking of bits, by the way. And, and the, the thing I'm trying to, to uh, I raise this issue because I know what you're thinking. You are thinking backslash and n are two separate characters. It's one. You said it's n. I was trying to see if I could, I could, I could, I could show show us the uh, character I'm looking for here, but I, I can't. I can't find what I'm looking for, which is pretty sad, really. Uh, thirteen. Can anyone see a thirteen here? I'm trying to figure out what the courage new. Courage return. Can anyone see the, I'm assuming the courage return is this. Can anyone see the zero D somewhere here? Probably something else. Anyway, something to think about. I was trying to see if I can find, so what I went, what I did here is I just went into the data section to see, you see this international number. Oh, maybe we should start with, uh, hi. Yes, sir. No, it's fine, it's hi. Yes. Uh, 
Sorry? No, 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 we are sorry, we are maybe just wait for a short while. Yeah, afterwards. You can stand up after. Good luck, you win, I'm sure. Just wait for a few minutes and then you, you do that. Thanks. Don't have to kneel. Uh, so, uh, right, so what I was trying to do here is I was attempting to. Garbage. I was attempting to see if I could show you the new line character, right? Mm. Um, what is E? E is 69.45. Now, I, just like everybody else in here, I, I, I always I get confused as well when I'm um, zero A. I can't zero A. What is N? What is lowercase N? Lowercase N is uh, 6E. OK, so this is lowercase N, right? This is uppercase E. So this must be the courage return, which is zero A. So where is zero A here? Line feed. Okay, so that's perfect. So it's not CI, it's actually line feed, right? Line feed, new line character, which is zero A. So, so, so what I was trying to, to, to tell you is that, hey, well, what have we learned about, if you see this in MIPS, this is the data section, and this is hexadecimal. This, these two, each of the two numbers represent a character. This is backslash N, and you can't see backslash N here because it's like, Qt stream can't write it for you, right? Which is why it appears as zero as a line. It appears as a dot. In my thing here, look at this, guys. Here, I changed enter natural number two. I started printing the line feed character, the new line character first. Backslash n and then enter, uppercase e. And then I went to the data section to see what's happening behind the scenes because I know that 45 is uppercase e in ASCII, right, hexadecimal, E. And then 6E is lowercase n. 0A is the line feed character. So, I know you meant well, right? And I was smart of you by saying 64 because we are counting the backslash is 32 bits and then the n is another 32 bits. But in actual fact, the special character backslash n, which is the line feed or new line character is actually one character. That's why it's called a, line, a new line character. It's a character, so it's one byte. It's here, zero A, which is one byte. The bytes, bits, and I don't know, bits, bytes, and bits, bytes, and I don't know what else is there. OK, I, I know we didn't do much, but uh, hopefully, even though we were working through these things, hopefully this makes some sense. Is this fine? Can you, can you, if this was to come in the exam, would you be able to answer it? Don't know. I will run it sometimes, even on my PC. <laughs> oh, we've been, excuse me, when did we, when did we start, just a minute. Do you remember when we started going through this lecture series? Spent a lot of time here, right? What are you talking about? Do you, do you be, <laughs> there are things that you can't do? Do people remember when we started this lecture series? We've been at it for, I think we've covered, we probably had like five separate lecture series on this, right? Which is a lot of time, more than a week. Actually, I've been doing this for about three weeks or something, I think, right? We started lecture series number 22 when I don't know if people have been keeping track of this. September 9th, right? But this was just part, part three, actually. We had part two, we had part one. Right, for part two, I'm just trying to give you some, what I'm trying to say is we've had more than enough time to practice. Yes. If you haven't been practicing since September 9th, then what have you been doing? What do you do when you go back home? What do you do over the weekends, right? You're supposed to come here and practice. No, this is serious. Uh, but anyway, I was just trying to showcase this. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, my question is that whenever I'm running this, uh, I'll find after I've written this, uh, then when I come back to this, yeah. 
Then you probably have defined it for the second time. Right? What? This is what happened. Okay, let me. What I would do is I'll share this, I'll put this on the edit on the collaborative edit and what you must do, right, as an exercise. Compare what I have with what you have to spot the mistake. You must learn how to spot mistakes. It turns yeah, out that so the carriage symbol shows you where the mistake is, right? That carriage symbol. Yeah. Yes, I would I would put it. Guys, uh, I will see you when you see me, but just to... Yeah, so look at this. We started doing this on August 26th. MIPS part two. We started doing this on the 26th of August. We've been doing this for more than, more than two, almost two months now, right? Hi. Oh, you have the fizz buzz. Okay. Three. Where's 15, 8, 19? No, it's wrong. <laughs> no, 15 is fizz buzz. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 this specific. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong, right? I'll, I'll work on this. Yeah. yeah, so that's a trick here, fizz buzz. They ask this in uh, interview questions, by the way. People fail, right? Fizz buzz, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but that was a good attempt. Oh, so the, guys, I'll see you when you see me. Thanks a lot. Oh, sorry, there's a, excuse me, sorry. There's a,